a couple of small parts from DF Robot in order to build a new rover out of them, and since all of the required electronics are reasonably priced, I have built three of them. With my personal counting scheme, this type of robot is named R18. The aim of this rover concept is to create a cheap and easy to replicate robot that can be controlled via a web interface remotely and that transmits live images back to your browser via a camera. No exotic components are used and the software as well as the build instructions are open source. The core element of R18 is an ESP32 CAM microcontroller board, which, as the name suggests, comes with a camera module. The ESP32 is a microcontroller with integrated VLAN functionality, another feature that is needed for a remote controlled robot. Additionally, there is a bright LED on the board, which enables driving in my robot room even during the dark hours. 8 GPIOs of the microcontroller are accessible via pins on the board and are therefore suitable for controlling peripherals. External components needed are a battery for the power supply that I had in stock... ...and a servo to tilt the camera... ...as well as two small geared motors that are received from DF Robot. The driver board is directly soldered to the terminals of the geared motors. This works same as those of 360 degree servos, so only one control line is required to run the motor with a pulse width signal of 50Hz and a duty cycle of 5% in one direction... ...or to turn the motor in the opposite direction with a duty cycle of 10%. Either at 7.5% duty cycle or in the absence of a pulse width signal, the motor stops. To wire the electronics, the pins must be pulled out of the plugs of the motors and the servo. A cutter knife is required to lever out the locks. I'm using the hulls of so called DuPonts or Trumper cables for insulation. Of course, wrapping adhesive tape or using shrink tubing is also possible. I cut through a micro USB cable, because the half with the Type A plug is needed to connect the electronics to the power bank. The correct polarity is checked with a multimeter, there is obviously plus 5V on the light red line, as expected. For the electronics I soldered two additional pin headers in order to be able to connect all peripherals to the power supply. In principle, however, the entire wiring can also be done without a soldering iron. The cables for plus 5V and ground are simply connected to one another via screw terminals. For the mechanics I started two of my 3D printers. About 170 grams of filament per rover were processed in two days for all parts needed. The mechanics of the red rover was created with my oldest 3D printer, not perfect, but with sufficient quality. Everything is held together by 3mm screws with 20mm thread length, as well as a 30cm long piece of a threaded rod and many nuts. The geared motors are available with different reduction ratios and also I opted for the highest variant with 75 motor revolutions per one revolution of the output shaft... I had to attach another reduction ratio of 5 to 1 to the wheels, a drop of super glue holds the pinion on the motor shaft. Without this extra reduction, the robot was simply a bit too fast, which made it difficult to control using a browser interface. As already mentioned, the energy is supplied via a power bank, which must be able to handle up to 2 amps of peak current. The smaller version I favored first with only 1 amp did not work, as a higher current is obviously drawn for a short time. On average, around 100 milliamps flow from the battery when the rover is idle. The current increases to around 200 milliamps when the motors are switched on, with a significantly higher current while starting up. 
more than about 200mm flow while videos are streamed. The two wheels can be used to drive forward... ...backward... ...or turn R18 on the spot when being controlled in opposite direction. The two motors are thus sufficient to drive and steer the rover. At the back there is a crown cap sliding on the surface to keep the rover upright. Another crown cap is attached to the top of the rover so that the vehicle can also be supplied with external energy in order to make it available 24 hours a day in my RoboSpadium. The ESP32 board is attached to a hinge so that the servo allows to point the camera up... ...down... ...or straight ahead. The linkage between the servo arm and the board holder is made of a piece of 1mm wire, for example from a paper clip. The camera has a maximum resolution of 1024x768 pixels with an image quality that is not outstanding but usable, it is definitely good enough for the robot. The built-in LED can be right in its brightness by using a pulse width signal. I programmed the ESP32 with the help of an Arduino Uno and the Arduino IDE. The microcontroller has enough computing power to operate a web server, thanks to open source. How to make the changes to the web server code to implement the control buttons for the rover is described in detail on my project page. The source code specifies which VLAN access point the rover connects to, so the little companions can be controlled by any computing device with a browser. To connect to one of them, all you have to do is to enter the rover's IP address in the browser. No app crap is required for control, with which the robot can be operated free of the don'ts of those false vendor login profits from Cupertino, Redmond or Mountain View. The purpose of my robots is to teach coding from scratch using free, open source software, not to follow any trends of those software dictators. Either single images or, as shown here, a video stream can be transmitted to the browser interface. The resolution can be selected via a drop down menu. With a good Wi Fi connection, a stream with 1024x768 pixels is possible. R18 is my cheapest type of rover to date, and everything is kept very compact when it comes to the software requirements. A driving time of 10 hours is possible with the batteries, for continuous operation via the sliding terminals I first have to convert one of my robot rooms. Until then only one of the three rovers will be supplied with electrical energy from the ceiling via cables, the two additional vehicles will only be switched on for special events. If you'd like to, you can take control of R18 in my RoboSpadium and explore this room from your desk, but keep in mind that only a series of still images is transmitted, no video stream. With that you get the feeling of controlling a rover from really far, far away. All of this can be done without registration and it is free of any costs, at least for you. If you'd like to support me financially in keeping my robots run and to expand my robot room, you are welcome to click the donate button on my pages, many thanks to everyone who has already made use of it. On my website you will of course also find the build instruction, the 3D files, the parts list and details about the software used to operate the rover. Have a click!